Hey y'all, it's your boy, Kill Wolfie Guy, and uh, I am here with something a little bit new, uh, something that is akin to the type of shit that I like to passively listen to while I am working on things. Um, I just had a little practice run of this, and by practice run, I mean like I sat here talking to myself for like fucking like 20 minutes before I realized that I hadn't fucking recorded, so here's the actual recorded version. Um... <laughs> So, uh, I thought I'd do, like, a little commentary thing to just kind of, like, wax about all the, like, little fucking decisions and stuff that, uh, I made in, um, fucking Night Walkies. Uh, so I made this cartoon, uh, basically to have a portfolio piece to fucking attract work. Um, I feel like the way that I roast the animation industry in this fucking cartoon is probably more likely to result in me never being hired again. <laughs> but, you know. I don't know. My own fucking experiences is not about anybody or anything specific. Um, but the main the main thing, other than just like needing a portfolio piece, um, as I continue to chip away at the endless fucking abyss that is Kill Wolfie Two, is uh, is that like last year, um, or the year before last year, I kind of like re it really really hit me like kind of the ramifications on my life of uh of being on the autism spectrum and of having ADHD and I wanted to kind of make something that was about that because I uh no matter where I go I kind of tend to find myself in a in a pretty neurodivergent crowd um and uh it it almost kind of if you've watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure um like me and my friends kind of joke that like uh, <laughs> niggas on the spectrum are kind of like, uh, are basically like stand users, you know, like they're, they're drawn to each other or whatever. So, uh, that is, that is kind of like the point I was making with this cartoon and just to kind of like have a character just to pretty much have fun with a character who, um, like pretty much resembles the way that I find myself moving throughout the world and socializing and, and shit like that. Um, all this shit is not exactly one for one. It's not very, very specific experiences or anything like that. But, uh, but nonetheless, Augie is very, very much, uh, like me without looking like me, um, in a lot of fucking ways. Um, no, I do not sleep through all table reads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i am not a writer i'm a storyboard artist uh but yeah i just thought i'd you know go through and talk about some of the inspirations and shit because i like listening to shit like this and i feel like somebody the fuck else might you know what i'm saying y'all niggas be watching me streaming shit back when i was doing that so yeah uh i thought i'd give it a fucking try and uh god damn do i feel dumb as fuck because i literally am just repeating shit that i that i already fucking said um <laughs> While I was recording this shit, or while I was thinking I was recording this shit a few minutes ago, and I was not, but that's okay. Practice run. I'm all fucking lubed up and shit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, just slide through this shit like all fucking like slick, like. Okay, so, um, <laughs> this studio is not anywhere, uh, fucking specific or, like, particular, uh, it's just kind of an amalgamation of personal experiences turned up, uh, just slightly. It ain't that fucking different from, like, some of the shit that I have, uh, that I've seen or dealt with or been sort of a victim of, uh, in these corporate art settings before, but, uh. You may notice that Roger Klotz over here on the fucking right um, in the middle is holding a fucking Nerf gun, and he was shooting Nerf darts at Augie while he was sleeping, and uh, it's because um, I went to a fucking job. I'm not going to say which fucking studio, but I went to a fucking studio, and as a part of my fucking orientation package, these niggas gave me a fucking Nerf gun. And this Nerf gun was given to me basically for the express purpose of um, if if we ever took any pictures or videos in the office, um, they wanted us to make the studio look very whimsical and like we were having fun at work. 
Now, being a fucking storyboard artist or an animator at a TV studio is, let, let me not hold you up, it is a office job, okay? Like, you go there, you are in an office with white walls and boardrooms and fucking uh, Berber carpet and... Uh, and it, it, it smells like a fucking office and it looks and functions like an office. Um, but, you know, I, I'm sure y'all have probably seen like videos on TV or something like that. If you're a younger cat or if you're somebody my age, uh, you know, like videos of somebody carrying a camera around like Nickelodeon Cartoon Network, you know, or one of these fucking places and uh, fucking, um, you know, niggas are shooting fucking nerf guns at each other you know sliming each other and fucking and fucking there's toys everywhere and stuff like that and that's not entirely inaccurate but i will say this though uh you know it is definitely by design because if you watch a fucking video of like people in a fucking you know animation studio or whatever office building shooting nerf guns and shit like that chances are that fucking whimsy uh, is kind of just like a momentary cover for uh, a horrific, horrific fear of encroaching deadlines. Uh, that is that is really what's going through people's minds and stuff like that. It's not that working at an animation studio is all that. It's it's fucking not. But uh, but I'm just saying though, uh, some of that some of that whimsy is a little fucking curated sometimes. You know in very very specific ways if you know what i mean like there's a there's a there's a lifestyle marketing to uh to being a to being a corporate artist that uh animation has its own fucking brand of and this is this is that um and uh yeah but this studio is not anywhere specific or anything like that um even though it has things that resemble other things but uh you know, they're all they all have stuff that is uh quite worth roasting. Um also the guy on the fucking left here, um, who has like Ahegao on his fucking shirt, that fucking that those Japanese symbols say fucking Ahegao. And if you don't know what Ahegao is, uh Google it if you're an adult. Awkward. <laughs> told you to make up your mind whether you're a blader or a boarder, idiot. I'm neither, sir, dude. I'm me, a roller blorder. <laughs> Whoa. Awkward. Okay, so, uh, first of all, the bully is me, and, uh, second of all, uh, fucking... Uh, this this joke this joke right here is like a, a long running in joke between me and uh, the voice actor of Adolf the Wolf from fucking uh, Kill Wolfie and my buddy Jules who also uh, frequently appears in my cartoons as well. When we first, uh, all three of us got to LA around the same time uh, to work in animation, which was around 2014, and around this time um, was kind of like during the during the rampage like the market rampage of like fucking uh adventure time and regular show and everybody was trying to mimic adventure time and regular show successes and that's how we kind of got a lot of people talking about bean mouths and cal arts style you know and stuff like that and uh if you came here you know chances are you were exposed to a lot of things that were hoping to catch that lightning in a bottle and when i say lightning i mean fucking money like <laughs> like it, you know there were a lot of these studios had um these pilot programs where they would have artists come in and everybody has their own fucking inspirations you know like they're like most cats out here are like they're inspired by anime they're inspired by horror movies you know like it could be fucking anything you know from artist to artist or whatever but if you look at a lot of the pilots and stuff like that and the content that was uh, coming out that was kind of like testing the market waters or whatever around then, there was a lot of shit that had a lot of the uh, the visual and audio and uh, theme trappings of Adventure Time and regular show. So me and, uh, me and these two friends who, like, you know, were always – like we were we were at these studios and we were you know um 
having to work with or around um a lot of a lot of people really really hoping to just like ride adventure time and regular shows fucking gravy train and this was not in general the artists this was this was mostly the people who were there uh to make a buck or you know like they they were there you know like the the people at the kind of top end or whatever were basically filtering everybody through how close they could make their idea resemble adventure time or regular show not to say there was nobody you know who was a grunt like me who was who was just genuinely inspired by it uh I fucking love Adventure Time, a regular show, and it, inspiration of it has probably shown up in my work, you know, like fucking like Hyenaville definitely, you know, like was that like 20 year old loser core thing or whatever, you know, like I would, but like, um, but you know, the reason that people were doing it was more because there was this idea, <laughs> sorry, not was, there is kind of this idea when it comes to corporate art that if something is mad fucking successful, you can uh you can just kind of like take its aesthetic trappings and uh, just do it again with something else like wearing its skin and uh, just kind of like ride its fucking gravy train to uh, making money or having similar levels of success. So you had this kind of ecosystem around here where everybody um, was either forced to or genuinely wanted to mimic uh, Adventure Time and regular show. Uh, hoping to fucking get rich off that shit or hoping to fucking get a show or to fucking stay employed if you were one of us and just kind of like afraid for your fucking future <laughs> or whatever. Uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of mimicry going on around here and a lot of, a lot of woo woo, you know, and, uh, and fucking, you know, ladder walking and, and salt being thrown over shoulders to recreate the successes of adventure time and regular show. And, uh, Everybody who was a victim of it fucking roast was roasting it back then. Um, it's kind of how you got like the CalArt style jokes online and stuff like that about the bean mouths and the fucking noodle arms and stuff like that. Uh, but while there are people who just kind of like look at something that is successful, that they just kind of like do the same thing and like you know whatever. Everybody's approach to art is fucking different. But like uh, it was mostly just a thing that a lot of us were doing either out of fear or adaptation or just being paid to and uh that's how you got a lot of that and uh man you know like it was the the roasting got crazy like we were we, we were all fucking roasting the shit out of that stuff because, but like we went to work you know smiling not because you know these like <laughs> the people who were who were there you know for the money and uh holding all the money and holding all the reins uh you know, they, they very much believed in just doing something that had already, you know, been mega successful. And uh, we were just kind of their right hands to do that. So uh, if you saw somebody like mimicking this stuff, I wouldn't even like judge their whole fucking character about it or anything like that. Uh, sometimes you just fucking go into a fucking field of work and, uh, you know, you just you just do things hoping that you can keep food on the table. <laughs> Like, even, like, the, the names and shit like that, you know, like, Mordecai, Rigby, you know, uh, and, like, all the characters in, uh, what, Margaret and shit, those characters had, like, old world names and stuff like that, which was funny as fucking regular show, you know, but, like, everybody was fucking doing it, though. Everybody, like, who was, like, trying to get some corporate shit going. Thurgood and Amadeus. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Kidding about which part? Your script was hilarious. Dude, great work. It's so awkward. I don't know, man. I'm not super happy with them after the notes. Yeah, their notes really strengthen the comedy formula. I heard they divide the punchline by how many words were in the script, right? To create this sort of... So... This is uh this is another thing that like you know if you're a young cat you might fucking very well encounter this in a studio and uh, I don't think that on principle this is a bad thing but like if you go and you work on a on a piece of corporate art like a TV show everybody who's working on that shit is uh like 
not everybody, not not everybody. That's that's not right. But like, you are very likely to see a lot of forced hype going on and hype about things that are not directly related to the art. And the part where I have her like kind of talk about uh talk about like dividing the amount of words in the script by you know like d- like doing like all the this like these like math tricks and shit like that in animation studios you would be really really fucking surprised um how much a lot of like rules and like superstitions and math are driving creative decisions um there's a lot of things that are stated to be absolute fucking no-nos like your absolute fucking taboo and uh you know obviously you can't keep from doing that all the time in art but like uh you know when you go into a corporate setting um you are not only expected to mirror hype back at all the rich people but you are also uh like there there is a lot of like really genuine like feeling that like whatever fucking product is being made whether it's like a show that is like that is actually something new or interesting or is doing something like off the wall you know like technically or whatever that uh every goddamn tv show is a revolutionary piece of media that is going to rock the zeitgeist um you know like no matter what fucking show you're working on and the justification for that is um oh we have all these rules and if you just follow the rules and you just walk under a ladder and you just throw fucking salt over your shoulder and like you know walk a walk a circle around the Cintiq or whatever you know divide the words in the script and and fucking all this shit like that you will have a massive success that will uh, boost your your resume and your social media presence and and the stock portfolios of the people who are really pulling all the fucking strings so that's kind of what this is making fun of and uh it i the reason that you know like Augie is having the fucking response that he is having uh, other than just the normal parts of just being like a, a fucking like neurotic motherfucker like trying to fucking like hold your shit in out in public and in a social situation is uh it's just kind of like basically me in these fucking situations being a person who values imperfect art I, I do not have fucking high standards for art. I do not think that art needs a lot of rules or to be, like, extremely technically impressive. I'm sure that's pretty obvious in my work that I am just a fan of just doing fucking whatever you feel like doing in the moment with art. And uh, as wacky and uh, and whimsical as animation's marketing is, uh, honestly, a lot of it is very, 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 very rigid and rules-driven and math-driven when it comes to these things. You know, like, comedy must be shot flat. If you're going to do anything in a cartoon, you must do it three times. And if you don't adhere perfectly to the three-act structure within every scene and everything, then, like, it's it's not fucking worth a damn. You know, things like that. And for the record, you know, like, all these things, like, do have their fucking purpose. You know, like, there's, there's nothing wrong with the three-act structure. There's nothing wrong with, like, you know, thinking about, like, screen direction or cinematic consistency or anything like that. Like, you know, uh, technical stuff in art has its fucking, like, it has its fucking merits. But it can't be everything. But when you're in a corporate setting, it is everything. No matter how whimsical the fucking marketing is. And because everybody is hype about cartoons... Everybody is also by association hype about all the rules and math as well because the rules and math are already there. They're being told to you by successful rich people and uh, you want to be successful and rich so you obsess over the rules and math too when you're working. Except uh, when you're me, you know, and let alone being able to look a motherfucker in the fucking eyes. You're talking about remembering all their fucking rules for art and shit when you grew up drawing dicks you know like to fucking like not fucking pay attention in class it's it's a lot but uh yeah just just kind of roasting some you know some of my own fucking experiences and the ass smack yes yes um i have been talked to the way that ronda fucking talks to augie in this fucking cartoon Ah, 
God, Augie, you're so funny. Oh. See you, GBF. We gotta go gay clubbing. We need to get you some dick, honey, or your pussy's gonna dry up. Dry up. Uh, boundaries. I have had many women in these fucking corporate animation settings fucking talk to me this way. Like, that was, this scene was barely any sort of fucking exaggeration <laughs> at all. Like, you get, like, sometimes these motherfuckers walk into a studio and they, they treat you like, like if they're a fucking trust fund kid or something like that, they treat you just like they fucking treated the fucking help or whatever, you know, like that was around the house. If they, if they just kind of waited and trust funded their way to being somebody important in Hollywood. Oh my God. You and Rhonda are so funny. How long have you guys been BFFs? Uh, I guess since production started. So maybe like a week and four days. Um, so shit like this that's on the fucking walls is uh, kind of representative of some of the the animation meta shit that I was talking about, you know, where they're like, they're kind of like, we already know what we fucking want. We want a success that mimics blank, you know, kind of fucking thing. And uh, while I have, I've only pitched a show once and it was not, it was not because I went looking for it. It was because like some, some younger cats who were around my age um, or like, I think honestly, even younger than me, like kind of spotted, uh, some of my kill wolfy shit online and like, we're like, Hey, do you want to fucking pitch? And it, it was going pretty good. Uh, it, that's, this is not reflective of that specifically, but, uh, honestly though, like a lot of places are just kind of like collecting pitches and pilots from artists, uh, for two very dark reasons uh that can be very very demoralizing the first of which is um basically to just have somebody else come in and be a face for the same types of things that they would already fucking think of to make and uh and oftentimes pitches are taken just to keep the artist from taking it and giving it to somewhere else even if the studio has no fucking interest in it so there's a lot of roasting about having a fucking show here. Also, the fucking ukulele thing is related to the Adventure Time response content that I was kind of roasting earlier or whatever. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh my god, are you okay? This, this shit. Uh, bear is also barely a fucking parody too about like how just kind of like not present Augie is <laughs> is is very much like I I don't think I've ever really made much of an effort to like make any of my characters um uh, as fucking hyperactive and or um autistic as I am in real life but. <laughs> This the way that he moves throughout the world, bumping into things, knocking shit over, running into fucking walls, and like fucking like almost killing people, and, and having no idea how the fuck it had. I, I ain't never almost kill nobody. I hope, but this is just this is pretty accurate to my day to day. Even though Augie is not, he doesn't like look like me, but like I I am constantly finding myself in situations like this, like just fucking like oh my god i am clumsy as shit bro like it, it is ugh. Yeah, what the fuck? also like with the fucking edge lord cup uh i put edge hog on his fucking license plate because like basically because i like really really edgy shit but i am not very intimidating or edgy in real life to be fucking real um <laughs> and neither is augie uh and also too um i basically like throughout this cartoon uh had everything that is spelled anywhere is is spelled full of fucking typos because i thought it was funny there's nothing deep to that <laughs> Also, if y'all have ever seen that video, Grime Step, this is this is just like the Grime Step guy, um, the Grime Step tutorial playing in the back with like some gunshots and shit to kind of mimic like an LA weirdo making noise and wandering around 
uh, causing chaos in the background in LA. But if you have not seen the video, uh, Grime Step Tutorial, that is the sound that is playing echoed in the background. It's supposed to look like a, uh, like a fucking distance away. So this this is kind of like the uh, the fucking JoJo's Bizarre Adventure thing that I was talking about, or uh, I think I mentioned it. I forget if this was. It's starting to blend together what was the one that I was recording and what I was not recording. So I don't remember if I said this or not. But um, when I what I think I was talking about, uh, fucking you know, neurodivergent people kind of like being able to spot each other. Uh, kind of like stand users in fucking JoJo. That was like what the sniffing was with like werewolves or whatever. That was like kind of what inspired that or whatever. Ooh, okay, what did you do? Sorry. That's insane. I can't believe you're the new neighbor. So, who the fuck are you? My name's Tyrone, dude. I just got in from Denver. Yo, I goddamn love Colorado. What the fuck are you doing here? Uh, Tyrone's wearing a shirt with Shadow the Hedgehog on it because I like fucking Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's it's foreshadowing for the fact that he uh that he spin dashes when he's in his fucking uh werewolf form. Busting my shit on camera for rent money. Oh my god. Oh, that hair is stunning, man. Bruh, that's so cool. Tyrone has a fucking thinning hair spot in the back of his head exactly where I fucking have one. <laughs> Most cartoons I've worked on is shit that nobody has ever fucking heard of. Fact. Like, honestly, most animation people, uh, most of their gigs are things that, like, nobody has seen or heard of or is, like, super, super, super fucking niche. It can be, like, really, really good. But, like, if something is not marketed well, you know, you may find yourself working in animation and people just being like, hey, where do you work? What do you fucking work on? And uh, And you're just like, I work on uh, fucking Golan the Insatiable, which I did actually work on. I worked on season two. That was uh, the first animation job I ever had. Nobody knew what fucking Golan the Insatiable was. Like, I would bring it up to people, and they were just like, yeah, I've totally heard of that. You know, or like, or they just like would be in confusion. They, you know, they would know that it's, they'd be like, oh, it's cool that you work in TV cartoons, but most of the time, nobody's going to have any idea what the fuck you work on. I love cartoons. Nigga, you won't after you watch mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't been on screen anything worth a damn either. <laughs> I don't know if that joke got across, but the joke was supposed to be that this cartoon is also, is he's on screen in this cartoon and that this cartoon is not worth a damn. <laughs> Denver got kind of weird. Can be, but, you know, I, I try and stay quiet just in case. So that that exchange was kind of more about, like, being queer somewhere or, like, being a minority than anything, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I kind of I rolled a lot of stuff into the, the werewolf thing, just general general any marginalized group you know it's not a, it's not a clean one for one thing with like being neurodivergent or anything uh but yeah like that that's where i got a lot of that and when they talk about it being safe um augie augie's apartment is like full of like weapons from like bloodborne and castlevania and shit and i was hoping to i was hoping to kind of convey that um he has had like demon hunters like come after him constantly um the skeleton in his fucking plant and like the skulls are supposed to be demon hunters that augie has killed and his wall is full of uh castlevania and bloodborne demon hunter shit with insults written next to it so like they say like dipshit pathetic ass face moron idiot fuckwit you know um 
but I love Bloodborne. It's one of my favorite games ever. So I put cool guy, but get wrecked next to the uh, Hunter's Saw from Bloodborne. Man, I have been in cars all day, every day for like two days straight. And I introduce you to some guy called Jesus. Bitch, what took you so long to add? So, and the Nightwalkie specifically is actually like, this is something that me and my friends do where uh, a lot of our time is spent wandering around the neighborhood high as fuck at night walking and waxing philosophical about really unimportant shit. And that is kind of like where, where the, or maybe very unimportant, very, or maybe very unimportant shit, very important shit or very unimportant shit. But uh, we don't really like go out to bars or like do much wacky shit so much as just like walk around and look at stuff in LA high as fuck because uh LA for many of us like you know both of these cats are not from LA uh and most people I know are not from LA and uh LA looks very mystical you know uh despite its grime and needles on the floor and uh unscrupulous completely sociopathic unchecked capitalism uh it is still a pretty cool town to walk around in and shit like that if you didn't grow up here. Cryptid to cryptic, big E or big dick, sanctions to lift it, for Lexis and business, maskless, bass kids, sounds from the land of the passionless, soft spoken boys with glasses. Also, this cartoon is the first time I ever like used any of my music where I like did the vocals or like the whole track by myself. Like this soundtrack I, I made completely was all music that I had already made, which was very, very new. Uh, I typically get a musician to help out, but, uh, you know, I figured I'd just show my music dick a little bit, you know. Three passes to rhapsodies, kings cannot stand this, presidents did not plan for this, American dreams are just means for slavers to remaster this, contracts by me crash for this, I stand my athletes, rebellion, remarkable, but big biz, my man has this. What the fucking thing are you talking I used a uh, I used a guitar amp on a wolf howl to make this noise. I'm very proud of that. Shadow the Hedgehog in his fucking shirt. <laughs> the mountains in LA are the thing that looks really mystical about it to me. Uh, so, like, I've, I've looked at those mountains often and thought about funny, you know, like, if I was in a video game and had fucking GTA cheat codes, you know what I'm saying? If it was San Andreas, you know, it would be cool to roll down a fucking mountain or something, some shit like that, if it wouldn't break my fucking neck. I know it's ghoulish as fuck that they fucking pee in, in like a pool, like up in somebody's fucking house, but like, trust me when I say that like these fucking like houses in the fucking hills or whatever, like where, where these like hyper rich motherfuckers live or whatever, um, it gets a little weird up there. There have been times that me and my roommates have been out for like walks or whatever, just on a fucking sidewalk or like my friends or whatever, and just been surrounded by cops for no fucking reason, so... I have I have, I have a little bit of spite. I have a little bit of spite towards rich people who live in the hills. They are they will call the cops on you for nothing. I have everywhere I have lived here, I've I have either been stopped a few times by a cop or two for just walking down the fucking street and especially at times when I've been walking around in the hills that have sidewalks and been surrounded by cops because I know these motherfuckers saw a nigga and probably fucking called the cops. Let's be real. I'd pee in their pool if I could get away with it. For y'all to feed me, I'm fucking wounded and these colonizers don't believe me. But see me how you like my lack of promise make, make, makes it e easy to just be me. Also, too, um, with the with the Bloodborne references and shit like that, I got um, Tyrone's design 
as a werewolf is is half inspired by a uh, fucking parl the dark beast from fucking bloodborne which he's just like kind of a giant uh like a giant wolf-like skeleton that is just covered in electricity and if if the cartoon was colored i think i would like definitely like go a lot more ham on that um for like tyrone just having a body that's just like that's just steel like a steel skeleton with just like electricity surrounding it or whatever um and Augie is kind of like he's he's kind of inspired by like uh what is it the fucking um i think the saint beast like one of the fucking bosses who had like a who had like tendrils and like a floppy head and shit and just like does poison and shit like that so their their fucking designs are are uh are very much just two bloodborne bosses that I like and uh the moon the moon is is intended to i don't know if i'm actually going to do anything further with like this lore but the moon is blown up in the shape of a cross kind of hoping to insinuate that like the world is aware that there are demons walking around in human flesh and they are like that's something that you know the forces in that world did to make people think that you know like that they are safe from demons or whatever because they ha- they are functioning on uh saving people from demons like in the beginning it says that like wackadoo the fucking animation studio that uh the fucking augie works at uh wherever possible like it says that it was like a catholic defense industry and like a lot of shit like in the background in these cartoons like it just has crosses everywhere like the truck that like drives by has like a cross on it and shit like that just to kind of like create the vibe that people are people are aware that there are werewolves and other demons in this world and uh and I kind of wanted to like show that in the short but I don't know if I'm going to do anything else with it but if I do it'll be related to that <laughs> That's not just Augie saying eat my ass too, that's that's in the song. <laughs> Dick metaphor. Yeah, so that's night walkies. That's some of the fucking ideas I had while working on it and some of the uh the shit I was inspired by. Very inspired by Bloodborne, uh very inspired by just real life uh real life experiences or whatever. You know, the the point of the cartoon is mostly just nothing is really gonna fucking change. You know, Augie is not going to defeat uh he's not gonna defeat capitalism or defeat you know, like, the the larger forces that exist in this world or something. I just wanted to kind of, like, make something that was, like, yeah, man, you know, existing within a capitalist hellscape fucking sucks, but at least you can you can run around high with the homies or whatever and or, you know, pork it out with some fucking rando or, or something like that that you fucking run into. And, uh, yeah, both, both of these characters uh, are both kind of, like, self-representations i think everybody's fucking ocs are self-representations i guess but like you know um that's kind of mostly what it was about was just to be like hey yo you know your your actual life can 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 be kind of like daunting or whatever but you know uh you you live it so you can have the freedom to just kind of like kick it with people and have fun after work and on a friday that's that's kind of the whole point of the fucking cartoon and to to kind of just like to value people who are you know who are kind of like you you know uh if you if you can run into them anywhere but uh i think that you know the way that they sniff each other out i think that there is kind of uh there is something i don't think mystical i don't think by smell nor do i think you know by any magical rules like jojo or anything like that i think that just like if hyperactive niggas find each other, you know, like niggas on the spectrum find each other, you know, like because we're looking at everybody around us and being confused, and then suddenly there are some people who are just not confusing, and uh, that's that's kind of just what I wanted to make the cartoon about. It it gets like that, 
it gets like that uh romantically and sexually as well as just platonically and uh i just kind of wanted to represent that you know and just kind of take a slice of my own life experiences and do something fun but uh i don't really have any super huge grand ideas with this fucking story like i do with like you know some of the other stuff that i post but uh yeah i had, I had fun making it That's from the first season of Boondocks. I fucking love that line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you found that interesting and you sat through that, uh, thank you. And uh, thanks for watching my cartoons. You know, I know I know that animatics are kind of not as easy of as easy of a sell, you know, like to get people to sit through. I don't really be watching other people's animatics unless like I know them or like it is something hyper niche to my fucking interest and i noticed that a lot of y'all were just like i'm f I, like let us be real i know that somebody else was was wanting to look at some fucking gay werewolves so that's why i fucking did that um but yeah that's uh that's night walkies i am uh sometime this month i'm gonna be putting out another animatic film as well that is fucking twice the length of goddamn night walkies it is it is huge and it's almost done uh so that'll be sometime soon and uh yeah that's just some of my inspirations and shit and uh if you if you enjoyed this commentary or whatever and are interested in this sort of thing you know like uh fucking don't be a stranger let, let it known let it be known in the comics it com comments comment jesus comments let it know and let it be known in the comments if you fuck with some shit like this uh like some passive kind of commentary content or whatever because uh Honestly, like, I love talking about my shit, and I listen to stuff like this all the time. And uh, I'm not, none, nothing on my channel is monetized, so it doesn't, like, I'm not too worried about it spreading or anything like that. Um, I'm just trying to cook something for the niggas who are my regs, you know, like, while also having a, a good portfolio piece that I can use to, like, find work or whatever. And if anything in this video gave you any fucking questions about working in animation or um about anything related you know at all holla i uh i don't make any money off the comments the numbers are not really so important so much as just like just kicking it with some motherfuckers who are uh on my fucking wavelength other werewolves so to speak uh yeah but uh thanks for watching uh have a have a wonderful wonderful day